Well, joining us now is Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives in Chicago. Larry, a pleasure to have you on the program as always, and thank you for joining us. Now that we are sort of seeing an increase sure. um, or a build-up of these stocks projected, what is your fundamental outlook for, for crude oil prices into 2018? You know, this is the first time I've said this all year, but I'm actually lowering my year-end estimate on oil. I've been the one that's been very wrong about it all, thinking oil should be mid to upper 50s in the U.S. terms. That's just not going to happen. I just think global stocks are going to continue to build. I, you know, I, I do see Brent um, climbing, um, you know, a few dollars higher from where it is today, but I think there's going to be a 2 to $3 discount for WTI, and that's just going to keep... Uh, you know, U.S. producers producing. So um, I, I do hope I'm wrong about this because, boy, I, that, that was one of my biggest convictions at the beginning of the year. But I basically have thrown in the towel and lowered my estimate to about $52 a barrel by year end. How, um, in your view, are we seeing the, the, the impacts of Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma impacting, obviously, those U.S. oil drivers, dr uh, drillers, I should say. We heard their um, U.S. drillers are cutting the oil rig count for the last three weeks or so. Um, what sort of impact are we seeing right now, probably more so from a demand perspective? Yeah, you know, the, the demand, uh, obviously, it's been a one-off because of, uh, you know, the hurricanes that hit. But... Overall, the demand has actually been pretty decent. I mean, considering all things, it's just that, uh, you know, the supply has been much bigger and uh, the stocks, you know, we, we've seen stocks go down four out of five weeks, but we're still above five year highs and just not enough to change the, uh, the overall narrative. Um, you know, that said, you know, anything could happen with uh, geopolitical risk and OPEC, et cetera. But right now it seems like uh, with the way things are that, um, you know, the, uh, the impact of the hurricanes wasn't as great as feared. Mm. Speaking of those um, tensions, we've been seeing an, an unwind of some of those safe haven assets, the likes of um, bonds, the, the Japanese yen, and notably gold as well. So I'm just interested in, in your view, I suppose, when you also have um, the US dollar rising along with those bond rates, it's never a good sign for, for the gold price. There's some talk there <laughs> about gold sort of yeah. moving back up towards the 1400 an ounce mark. What is your view? Where do you see the gold price going from here? Yeah, well, we'll start with gold. And it's funny because, you know, I'm the one who, who believes that um, Treasury yields will stay low. I mean, I think they'll be higher than they are today. But, you know, if that is true, then gold should rally. And that's a big reason why gold did rally, because Treasury yields, you know, have dropped so much. Uh, but that said, I really think the macro picture for gold is that gold tends to go up in price when people feel like central banks do not have control. And it seems like they do have control right now. I'm not saying that they can uh, think they can't lose the control, but it just tends from a macro perspective um, that central banks around the world are doing a significantly great job. And I think that's bearish for gold. And I think on the other hand, what's keeping it up is, is precisely the fact that there has been a lack of inflation until this past week um, and rates have gone down. And we saw the 10 year yield go down to almost 2% um, just on Friday, rallied 17 basis points. So I think gold is overstretched. I was a little bit bullish on it from the beginning of the year, but not, not up here. I think it deserves to be well below 1300. Mm -hmm. Just while we are within the commodity space, and um, I'll come back to those US rates and the Fed in just a minute, but your thought on iron ore, we've been seeing a lot of, you know, good news coming out of China, um, some, some good data, I suppose, really supporting the growth outlook over there. Um, and, and that's really been supporting um, the price for, for not only iron ore, but some of those other base metals, the likes of copper. Um, just your view on, I suppose, yes. some of those risks, yes. perhaps, for the outlook for iron ore and just where you see it going um, from here. Yeah, well, I don't have to tell my Australian friends that, you know, it's China. That's the upside risk and the downside risk to iron ore. But right now, you know, what, what I see is that, you know, Roy Hill uh, has most of its capacity at the market right now. I mean, and so um, the, the market has held up pretty well, all things considered. But now that that's almost out of the way with Roy Hill of Australia, I think that's going to give the big three a chance to really start controlling the price. And I think, you know, year end, 
um, you know, we're going to see uh, iron ore in Australian dollar terms trading, continue to trading in that mid 70 level, which would translate to like low 60s in the U.S. dollar terms. But again, um, it's all about China. Will, will demand uh, stay robust or will it do the opposite? All right, Larry, let's move on to the market. And um, just to take a look at some of those moves, in particular, the financial space, which has really been supported at the moment, those US long dated Treasury yields. And you also briefly mentioned that have been have been rising there, quite a significant um, spike there in some of those yes. yields. And that seems to really be providing quite a big lift for the financial sector. Yeah, I mean, who would have ever guessed week to date, the banking index is up three and a half percent and, you know, just in a few days. And then we have also um, the S&P 500 up three percent since the August lows. I mean, that's incredible. But, you know, consider the fact that um, sovereign yields going down. Um, I'm not I'm sorry, sovereign yields, sovereign bonds going down, yields going higher have given have given the market a lot of confidence. I mean, it, it was pretty eerie out there last Friday when. Uh, the 10 year yield was back down to 2%. Um, I think the market would feel very comfortable with the US Treasury up around 230, 240 area. Um, it's got a long way to go. But we had like four significantly good inflation numbers have come out since the weekend China, India, UK, and Sweden. And now we have the US with CPI uh, coming out on the 14th. So we'll see. Um, but, you know, I. I, I I'm not uh, I'm actually neutral to underweight U.S. equities. All that to say, I do like the financial space. I still would um, repeat being overweight in the eurozone, especially in financials. And I really continue to like um, emerging markets, especially China and India. Mm. Is that because you say that you're underweight U.S. equities? Is that because things are looking a little expensive at the moment? I mean, we're at these new record highs once again. It's pretty incredible that despite all those concerns out mm. there, um, we've still seen this support coming through, that buying support there. Are things looking just a little expensive, perhaps, yeah. in, in your view? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think absolutely expensive, but relatively inexpensive. And I think it's more about the fact that we're closer to the end of an expansion than we are at, at a beginning. I mean, we started in expansionary mode you know, long before emerging markets, long before Europe. So I just think it's a simple fact that you know, on a relative basis, um, equities are still cheap compared to bonds. They really are. But from, you know, an absolute level, they are expensive. But it's more about the fact that we're just closer to the end uh, than we are at the beginning. I'm not calling for a crash. I just think there's better risk reward elsewhere. Mm -hmm. All right, Larry Shover, it's been a pleasure as always. Um, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.